So in this video I'm going to be talking about the first movement of Beethoven's sixth sonata in F major, his opus 10, number 2. Now there's a few reasons why I've decided to play this piece. The first is that um, going back to when I was a kid learning to play the piano at school, I played um, the two other sonatas in the set. So opus 10, number 1, which goes like this. <laughs> number three in D major, which goes like this. And this one, I'd only played the last movement for an exam and I, I'd never really got around to learning the other movements. So I thought it might be quite nice to go and um, go back to it. The other reason why I'm playing this piece is because I'm working on a project at the moment where we're doing some video walkthroughs um, on all of the uh, Beethoven sonatas um, with pianist um, Masayuki Toyama. And I thought oh, it would be quite nice to play some of them myself. I was quite inspired watching those videos. Um, but the problem is that I'm an amateur. I only have a limited amount of time to play. And most of Beethoven's sonatas, barring one or two of them, are not only long, but also quite difficult. Now, this one isn't uh, easy. It's certainly got some difficulties in it. But it is quite a bit shorter than most of the others. It's only three movements. And also the duration makes it possible for me to play at many of the meetups that I'm a member of. Because there's often a, um, a limited time slot. And even for some of the shorter ones, if I did it without repeats, I might actually be able to play the whole sonata. Whereas many of them, not even a first movement is going to um, fit. Um, and then the other reason why I, I want to play this, I, I think it's an incredibly charming piece. And it's also quite interesting. The reason why I say that is because I guess we tend to think of Beethoven as a very brooding, passionate person. And um, you know, we, so much is said about his politics, his revolutionary ideals, and then the, you know, the triumph of adversity, the deafness, and the culminating in the Ninth Symphony, and all of that. And I think that these aspects, the more intense aspects of his personality, overshadow other parts, like the fact that, particularly earlier on in his um, uh, writing and music, there's a wonderful sense of humour and of fun and playfulness, frivolity. And I think I quite like this as an opportunity to engage with parts of Beethoven that we don't really think of that often and to get a more rounded sense of him as a person. And this piece I would describe as silly, fun, joyful, jovial, playful, all of those kinds of things. Um, and so hopefully in this video um, I'll uh, illustrate some of those traits for you. So I'm going to start just by, um, let me just play the opening theme so you can hear how it starts off. This isn't programmatic music, it's, it's called Sonata, it's not got uh, another title assigned to it. Um, so it's absolute music, um, whereas programmatic music might be Walking by a Babbling Brook or you know, the, uh, something like List, like the, uh, the Adventures of Hercules or something, whereas this, this doesn't have anything like that. But that doesn't mean that it's not evoking some kind of mood or feelings and that you can't put your own personal narrative to it. In fact, that's part of the fun. And so I have a story, which almost certainly isn't Beethoven's story, but um, hopefully evokes, or, or hopefully is in keeping with what he's trying to convey with, with this piece. So I'm imagining a parent comes home from work and is just trying to finish up a few emails or something, like sitting in the dining room, and, um, and just like not quite done for the day yet. But they have a child, and the child doesn't quite see why work is continuing into the evening, and um, the child wants to play. So I think of this as almost like peeking out. Peekaboo, I see you. And the parent perhaps says something like, oh, not, not right now, I just need to work. Maybe later I'll play with you. Um, but the child isn't having any of this. Parents say, "Oh, come on!" Um, it's getting slightly irritated. Whereas in the um, the, the first um, bit, um, it's sort of a bit more tender. This. Ten 
tender and pleading, whereas this is a bit uh, agitated. <laughs> Imagine this bit here. It's almost like a prelude to a game. Parents sort of packing up saying, okay, I'm not going to get any work done here. And it's sort of like a slight, it's forceful, but it's still in a playful way. I don't think there's um, an actual underlying anger or frustration um, here. I, I think almost maybe they was too happy to have an excuse not to work. Um, and then this here. Is, um, I, I think of that as sort of the uh, is not uh, uh, some kind of game or chase is, is, is going to ensue. This next bit is quite interesting because Beethoven does something that's quite unconventional to create an almost like rude, annoying, jarring or poking feeling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play it the way that Beethoven hasn't written it, the way it traditionally accents something like this, um, and then I'll play it the way that he has and I'll exaggerate it a bit and hopefully you'll see what, what he's done. Now that's not what Beethoven's written, but that's accenting the strong beat, the first beat of the bar, which is traditionally what one would do. This is what Beethoven does. So what he's doing is instead of... Um, He does. That's some kind of. I, it's annoying. It's some kind of poking. Um, and then um, oh, let me just pick it up from the. Let me do that bit again. This bit, I imagine this. It's kind of sound kind of almost sticking out tongue, sort of where where. It was orchestrated, that would be in the horns. Um, and then this next bit, I, I think the uh, um, parents say, okay, now you've had it, and they're sort of throwing everything aside to, to really get stuck into this, this, this chase. Where are they? Oh, there they are. What's quite interesting about this piece is that it is um, uh, it is still very classical um, and it's from Beethoven's earlier period. So much of what you have in it is what you'd expect in a classical sonata. But um, there are elements where Beethoven innovates a bit, um, which, which are quite interesting. You can see him, he's starting to evolve and break the mold. And he does this throughout his, um, his, his work or his career. Um, and he, he tries a few new things and then he sort of formalizes those things and embeds them um, in subsequent works. Um, but um, this piece is still very classical and it has elements of that Mozartian beauty. As I think I've said in the movie Amadeus, um, the, the unfulfillable longing. But there's also an almost, I don't mean this as disparagingly as it sounds, but almost an ugliness or harshness to this, like this. <laughs> These little accents, this a, um, that it's a it's a prickliness that um, I think is 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 it's fun, but it's almost vulgar in some ways, um, and I think that's quite interesting because I think we do see more and more we, we do see quite a lot of that um, as Beethoven starts developing his own very distinct style. Now um, I also think of this bit here, this. Um, uh, Oh, let me just go from a bit before. This is this is sort of the uh, the mock rage. I don't think it's a real rage because I, I think that there's an underlying um, pervasive sense of fun in this piece. But this and sort of picking out where where are you? And that to me, I think of as. 
as um, sort of like one of those cartoons like Tom and Jerry or something where the one's chasing the other and the, the whole house is just getting wrecked but you know the, the, the chase is all that all that matters and this bit in the left turn I think it was it's a bit of a taunting you can't get me you can't get me um, so it goes <laughs> It's just uh, the game is continuing and it's just um, flowing with, uh, filled with fun and and and, and joy. And um, it's sort of like, um, yeah, right, come. And uh, what like, no, no, wait, wait, you're not gonna get me. And then, uh, oh, it was, it was, uh, yeah. It's just playful and delightful.